Hey, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Monday. This is Seattle Now. There's a thriving black market for the catalytic converter on your vehicle. KUOW producer Brandy Fullwood went out to find out what's going on, who's buying, and what you can do to protect your car. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. Starbucks will stop requiring fully vaccinated customers to mask up starting today after the CDC said that was okay to do last week. But it's up to businesses to decide what they're okay with and whether they'll require any proof you've been vaccinated. For now, Costco, PCC, and Trader Joe's, you can leave your mask off. Fred Meyer, QFC, and Whole Foods, leave your mask on. Meh. Maybe just leave your mask on. It's probably easier. The FBI has arrested a Lake Forest Park man for entering the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Seattle Times reports the FBI said Friday Joseph Zlab was arrested the day before in Everett. According to court documents, Zlab is charged with two counts, including one count of violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. That makes six Washingtonians facing charges for taking part in the Capitol riot. And if you are eating PCC brand yogurt while listening to this, stop and throw it out. State health officials say it's likely linked to an E. coli outbreak that has sickened 11 people in four counties. They're following up with the organic Eastern Washington dairy farm that supplies the co-op. So far, there have been eight cases here in King County. Most of the people who've gotten sick are children under 10 years old. If you drive a Prius, you probably already know that catalytic converters are getting stolen like hotcakes in Seattle lately. And it's not even the catalytic converter they want. It's the precious metals extracted once it's stripped down. Producer Brandy Fullwood has been digging around to understand what's going on. Hey, Brandy. Hey, Trish. So what the heck is going on here? Well, so this is sort of like a national issue that somehow pops Seattle's bubble. We don't usually... (laughs) <laughs> meet the national news standards. But this time around, it actually did happen. When I called up the King County Sheriff's Office, they said that their crime analysts had seen from 2019, there were 11 thefts of catalytic converters, and then it just jumped up to 285 in 2020. So it's been like a pretty big deal. And I think it's probably going to get worse for the rest of the year. All right. And why the Prius? It seems to be the Prius is the top targeted car with a catalytic converter that somebody wants. As far as I I can understand is the Prius is what the Sheriff's Department calls the gold standard of catalytic converters. They've maybe got more precious metals in them than, say, any other average car. It used to be that people would hit, like, a a GM sort of car or an old truck. And that's old news. People are going after the cars with more metal in them. Okay, so... All of us have heard the words catalytic converter, but I am not quite sure what this does. What is it and what does it do? That's fair. I think a lot of people think it's inside of their cars and it's actually right underneath your car. So a catalytic converter is the thing that controls your exhaust emissions. And it's maybe a little bit more complicated than that. I did reach out to a lot of really smart scientists who described it as like this ceramic piece that then gets this slurry of metals, of all these precious metals painted over it. So I reached out to Brian Flynn, who's an emeritus professor at the UW. He works for the Department of Material Science and Engineering, and he basically explained what a catalytic converter does. The combustion that happens in the gasoline engines and other engines isn't always complete. Uh, When you don't burn everything completely, you get some more reactive gases. Uh, What happens with these catalysts is they help these reactions keep going. So it converts carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. That is much less harmful than carbon monoxide, which is not only poisonous, but it's a much more potent greenhouse gas. And Brandy, it's all about the metal. It's not that giant piece. It's just that stuff that's contained in there, those precious metals. Yeah, and it's precious, but it's also unique. It's this material that can do way more than any other earth-abundant material that, at least that we know of, can do right now. 
Anything else doesn't compare. They're the ones that work the best. It takes less of them. The reactions occur faster. They are some of the best catalysts that we know. So on, on the one hand, these precious metals that are in them, the palladium, the platinum, the rhodium, they're all really rare. There are maybe one or two mines in the U.S., and they're just these really shiny, beautiful, durable things that people use in dental equipment. They use it in jewelry. They use it in these like fancy French glasses that I considered buying until I saw the price tag and flutes. <laughs> So all these qualities, of course, they make for like these really expensive pieces of material that end up being two or three times more expensive than gold, at least the palladium and the, the rhodium. They can be about $2,000, $3,000 an ounce. Well, you can see the draw if there's a market there. So it's not even that surprising that this is happening all over the city. And I have heard the sounds of Salzals overnight in my neighborhood in North Seattle. And it happened to you. Yeah, it did. We were warned. And like, fair enough, we were warned by some neighbors. They warned us about our Prius. Um, this is what's going on. You guys need to watch out. And we didn't think much of it in the springtime. But by the summer of 2020, it was just gone. How did you know it was gone? Did you just come out and well, so for some people, it, it makes this really awful sound. Um, funnily enough, Brian, the metallurgical engineer that I spoke to, his was stolen too, but just back in 2011. Started the truck, and it was like, -da 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 -da, really loud. I'm like, did I hit something last night? I sure don't think so. Yeah. Our car just fully shut down. It, it turned on, and then it was like, hey, something's wrong. Could you please help me out? I don't know what's going on. And then it just shut down. So we had to be towed out. Um, but it isn't neighborhood specific. When when I reached out to, to folks about this, it sounded like it was happening all over um, Seattle. So I reached out to Tracy Record, who's the editor for the West Seattle blog. And she said that, one, her catalytic converter was stolen. But she's heard that dozens of people in the past month had theirs stolen, too. The main thing is that everybody thinks it can't happen to them. No one's, you know, they parked under a bright light or they parked in their driveway and there's just no way someone's going to get, get out there under their car and cut off this piece of equipment and make off with it. And what they don't realize is that it can happen in literally a minute. Apparently, the, the thieves really have the technique down and they look for certain kinds of cars, and they might hit multiple ones on the same block. Brandy, every single person you talk to for this story has had their catalytic converter stolen. Yeah, it's the Seattle commonality thing. Everybody who's anybody is getting their catalytic converter stolen. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we can be helpful. Did you learn anything about what to do, about how to prevent this theft? Yeah, I mean, like, like Tracy was saying, like, Everybody thinks that this can't happen to them because they parked in a bright spot. Surprisingly, you're supposed to park in a darker place um, mm. if you want to be less of a target. It's like where people don't look. Um, this is happening in broad daylight even. So you want to try and make your car as conspicuous as possible. Maybe if you have a garage, if that's a benefit to you, that could be a solution. But for the many people in Seattle who don't have garages, who may live in apartments or just have street parking as an option, you could likely paint your catalytic converter. You could try and make it in some way unique because there's no real way of identifying it. And that's one of the, the biggest problems is that you don't know if it's stolen and there's no way of, uh, of tracking it when it's gone. Wow. This is incredibly frustrating. Who is buying these stolen catalytic converters? So when I first started looking into this, my first thought was maybe it's at like your regular recycling center. Maybe they're going to be the ones to buy it. Like, you know, they'll buy like your paper, they'll buy old bikes, they'll buy pieces of metal. But as far as I've learned, a lot of the places around here either don't want to talk to me very much or they don't they don't buy that anymore. Maybe they buy them for uh, a couple dollars. So I reached out to a scrap metalist in West Seattle he owns West Seattle Recycling. His name is John Howe. And I thought maybe at a scrap metal yard, this would be happening all the time. Um, but he told me that he's not really buying catalytic converters anymore, at least not that many. Almost never, maybe never, because, because we don't pay very much. I know that I've heard they're worth several hundred dollars, but we never pay more than 40 or 50. So, oh, why is that? Are they just not? Because I don't want to pay very much. Well, because there's such a, there's a huge range of value in catalytic converters, all the way down from zero if there's no platinum beads inside. So that's the first thing you look for. Um, and so if, if it's empty, then it's just scrap steel and it's worth zero. Well, if he's not buying them, where are they going? Where are people selling them? 
it doesn't seem like it's that difficult to unload them. Yeah, I had a hard time trying to track that down. It sounded like a lot of guesses, a lot of hearsay that maybe it's in these deep, dark corners of the internet. And I kept saying, well, where on the internet? Um, <laughs> so you'll look at, you'll look at certain brokers who say, uh, well, if you want to sell a catalytic converter, we only take a hundred in at a time. And those sorts of large places sort of rushed me off the phone, but. Those same places sort of squared with what the scrap metalists in West Seattle, they think those are the places that people can sell them. That's where they see their buyers flagging, like, maybe don't sell there, maybe take some caution. And when I called the sheriff's office, Tim Meyer, who's the sergeant there, and their media relations officer said that that's exactly where their detectives are trying to look right now. But it still kind of sounds like a, a wild west for catalytic converter theft. There's not much enforcement, and they're really hoping for a solution from Olympia, because on the national level, what the enforcement looks like is maybe making catalytic converter theft a felony. We have the laws of the state of Washington, but I think it's the laws of economics that probably trump those, because as long as those prices stay high and that demand stays high for you know, the platinum, palladium, and again, especially rhodium, that's going to create an economic incentive. And that's going to allow these mid-level brokers to be cash rich, if you will, so that they can go out there and continue to incentivize those street level suspects to go out there and steal converters. All right. Until then, protect your vehicle. Randy, thanks so much for checking into this for us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Seattle Now is produced by Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, Claire McGrain, and Jason Bigano. Brandy Fullwood produced today's show. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow. 